talking with? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unhinged sitcom moments. It's my own fault for using PowerPoint. PowerPoint is boring. People learn in lots of different ways, but experience is the best teacher. For this list, we'll be looking at the wildest shenanigans our favourite sitcom characters have ever got themselves into. If we missed any of your favourite bonkers moments, let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Jack Goes to Heaven, Will and Grace. Ah, the age-old question. Is Cher really God? Oh, my Cher. <laughs> you are God. Chastity, Elijah, it all makes sense. We're inclined to say yes, and so was Jack in the Will and Grace season four finale. After being rejected from yet another audition, Jack starts to have a real crisis of faith when it comes to his acting career. He decides to quit altogether, but then suddenly suffers a head injury. Don't ever stop dancing, Jack. Don't ever stop dancing. Show business needs you. <laughs> but if it needs me, how come I keep getting rejected? You know, don't talk to me about rejection, okay? <laughs> Who should come to him while he's knocked out cold? Why, Cher, of course. In this bizarre dream, Cher encourages Jack to not give up so quickly. When he awakens, he takes her advice. Follow your bliss. Follow your bliss, Jack. Follow your bliss. Follow your bliss. Uh, my bliss is this way. She is Cher, after all. Number nine, the hockey rink entrance. Parks and recreation. Leave it to Tom to drop the ball and cause a kerfuffle as wacky as this. Tom? I couldn't afford enough premium carpet to get us to the stage. I mean, it was a short walk, but it was pretty luxurious, right? During Leslie's run for office in season four of Parks and Recreation, the team bands together to try and help her win. April books the venue, Tom brings the red carpet, and everyone gathers the makings for a perfect rally. Unfortunately, things don't go as planned. Turns out, April's venue is a hockey rink, Leslie's supplies are missing, and Tom's red carpet doesn't make it all the way across the ice to the podium, which makes for a downright hysterical feat of physical comedy. Gloria Estefan's Get On Your Feet might just be the best song choice for a scene ever. Okay, stay still, stay down. Pistol Pete, everybody. Still got it. Get on. Number eight, Princess Leia, 30 Rock. When it comes to sitcom characters, Liz Lemon is the definition of unhinged. I am going to jury duty, but I will be right back. I got my Princess Leia outfit, some Playgirl magazines from the early 1980s. They will dismiss me immediately as a weirdo. But what makes her antics so funny is just how relatable they are. So is the case with her Princess Leia bit. And I don't really think it's fair for me to be on a jury because I'm a hologram. You seem fine to me. Report to jury room B. Charles what now? When Liz gets called for jury duty, she tries everything in her wheelhouse to get out of it, including trying to make herself seem bonkers so that she might be excused. Apparently, the court doesn't mind having Princess Leia on the jury, however, and Liz still has to serve. You can drop the voice. Oh, this used to get me out of jury duty in Chicago all the time. This ain't Chicago, honey. Look at these people. That's a court case that we'd travel galaxies to see. Number seven, sabotaging Cece's wedding. New Girl. If you're a fan of New Girl, you know that Winston loves a good prank. But just, I don't know, what about today? Just today, you give me full on crazy. Yeah! You listen here! <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. hey, what? nobody's doing anything! Combine that with Schmidt's everlasting love for Cece, and you've got a wild sabotage plot afoot. On the day of Cece's wedding to Chivrong, Schmidt believes Cece doesn't actually want to get married, and recruits Nick and Winston for help in his plan to derail the event. Nick initially refuses, but it doesn't take much arm twisting for Winston to agree. These crazy kids do everything they can think of to ruin this wedding. They replace the music with Cotton Eye Joe, they use an air horn to scare the horse, and then there's the whole badger incident. Uh, Bucky got out of his cage, man. No! Go get him! No! Get no, out of here! You're coming with me! Ah! Yeah, ah! You don't do no bits! Oh, I want out of this crap! <laughs> Luckily for them, CC didn't want to go through with things anyway. 
Number six, accidental accomplice, Shit's Creek. Leave it to Moira to make another man's death all about her. No, John, no, no. I have endured a cornucopia of trauma the last few years. I draw the line at living in a crime scene. When Stevie discovers a man's body in one of the motel rooms, the group has to figure out what to do. Instead of helping, Moira starts to panic. The last time I felt this emotionally encumbered, I was playing Lady Macbeth on a Crystal Skies cruise ship during Shakespeare at Sea Week. Okay, well, I don't know what to do either because you still haven't told me what exactly happened. She tells David that the night before the man died, she saw him in the hall and he asked her for a painkiller. She had some, but didn't want to share, so she told the man no. Well, why didn't you just give him the pill? Because, David, because I can barely come to terms with the fact that I've resorted to hoarding sample packets of a basic headache medication, let alone reveal it to the world. When she found out he was dead, she inexplicably came to the conclusion that it must be her fault. Not only is this a pretty wild jump to make, but bringing David into it only turns him into an unwitting accomplice. Well, are you even sure that the pill would have saved his life? I have to let the courts decide. The courts? Well, now that you've unloaded this on me, what am I, an accomplice? David, I came here to be talked off a ledge, not pushed. Things are sorted out pretty quickly, but this is one hell of an exchange. Number five, the Great Herring War, the Golden Girls. We all know just how funny Betty White was. In an early episode of The Golden Girls, our favorite gal pal squad begin to question whether they should live together. This is exactly what happened during the Great Herring War. <laughs> The Great Herring War. Suddenly, Rose starts to tell one of her signature hilarious stories, causing Dorothy and Blanche to break out in giggles. What's so undeniably bonkers about this scene is that so many people believe actress B. Arthur and Rue McClanahan are really breaking character. I mean, the possibilities are overwhelming. <laughs> exactly. The Johansons wanted to pickle the herring, and the Lindstroms wanted to train him for the circus. White's delivery is so natural. It also led many to theorize that she was improvising. Even though it was all written in the script, this scene is so unequivocally amazing to watch, and Arthur and McClanahan's laughter is just the cherry on top. Tell me, Rose, um... <laughs> did they ever shoot a herring out of a cannon? Here's an easy life hack if you need a pick-me-up. Number four, the fire drill, The Office. If there's one thing the office is known for, it's giving us unparalleled moments of chaos. But experience is the best teacher. Today, smoking is gonna save lives. Usually, these involve one Dwight Schrute. His Hannibal Lecter performance during CPR training is certainly one of his finer moments, but nothing beats this crazy fire drill. Oh, fire! Oh my goodness! What's the procedure? What do we do, people? The are dead. Oh, how did that happen? It's out in the hall. No, we don't know that. The smoke could be coming through an air duct. Oh my god! Okay. Dwight decides his colleagues don't care enough about fire safety. Does he decide to educate them in a friendly manner? In that world? Touch the handle. If it's hot, there could be a fire in the hallway. What does warm mean? Oh my gosh, try the door. Not a viable option. What next? Don't try! Go to the other door. Oh, here's a door. Check that one out. Dwight stages a real fire, forcing the entire company to evacuate the building and nearly giving poor Stanley a heart attack. If the cat thrown through the ceiling didn't solidify this under the category of unhinged, we don't know what will. It was only a simulation. What? Fire, not real. This was merely a training exercise. So, what have we learned? Oh, come on. Number three, the prank, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Lesson learned, never cross Will. No. <laughs> but I got loose, man. Then she really went off. So I grabbed this rock, man. After Carlton drafts Lisa and her friends to play a couple of pranks on the Fresh Prince himself, he decides to get even. In a hilariously over-the-top monologue, Will tells Carlton that during an encounter with Lisa, he accidentally killed her. Gotcha. Believing his actions have inadvertently led to this outcome, Carlton begins to lose it. Actor Alfonso Ribeiro starts to scream like a maniac and literally runs around the entire set, Emphasis on entire. Carlton has always had a tendency for dramatics, but this full set sprint is definitely the height of his theatrics. No! 
Number two, Blue Tobias, Arrested Development. Leave it to Arrested Development to make Blue Man Group a running gag. Tobias is one of the more eccentric members of the Bluth family, which is saying something, and his obsession with this performance arts group pushes him over the top. Are you crazy? Are you blue? Only in color, Michael. Only in color. It seems I might have stumbled upon an acting opportunity. In season two, Tobias attends a Blue Man Group performance and immediately becomes intent on joining in on the fun. He doesn't actually make it into the group, but when has failure ever stopped a Bluth? Look at you. <laughs> I mean, you're holding a sledgehammer. Your shirt is co Oh, I did that. Mm. Um, here, let me... Uh, well. Tobias practices painting himself blue multiple times over the series and even starts his own one-man show. It's one of the show's funnier, more off-the-wall bits and it makes us laugh every time. Do you have an audition yet? Oh, no, no, I'm not in the group yet. No, oh, I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> There's gotta be a better way to say that. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hold Up Parody, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Beyonce, meet Titus. Hell no, I ain't playing with you, Michael. Uh -uh, I'm not fooling with you, Michael. Back up, I ain't playing with you, meatball. Michael, I'm not playing with you, meatball. Literally every scene with Pimento. Brooklyn Nine Nine. The physical embodiment of unhinged, if we've ever seen it. Uh, how'd you get in the apartment? Oh, it was easy. I just seduced the old lady upstairs, came down the fire escape. Jimmy the window open, bing, bang, boom, I'm inside your living quarters. Totally. Thanksgiving food fight. Cheers. Food fights are for friends. <laughs> Charlie's dating profile. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Charlie should stay off the internet. What, like in movies and cartoons? What are Little we... green ghouls, buddy. Don't write ghouls. I'm not. I'm putting no. travel. Jesus Christ, what are your dislikes? People's knees. Oh, come on, Bro, dude, come you gotta on. Be you know what, we'll just make it all up. Cats, unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Who knew it was that easy to get into cats? From Bumble's holiday, from Bumble, he's so silly. In fact, he dies if he doesn't get a blow. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the darkest timeline, community. If there's one thing community is known for, it's committing to the bit. Pizza guy was super creepy. So you're saying he was a pizza guy? <sighs> I wonder what happened in those other timelines. I bet there are no other timelines. And no bit has ever been committed to harder than the darkest timeline. The concept first came to light in a season three episode where the gang orders pizza. Just so you know, Jeff, you were not creating six different timelines. Of course I am, I'll bet. One, Troy. <sighs> Damn it. I'm gonna go as fast as I can so I don't miss anything. Jeff rolls a die to figure out who has to go get it from the delivery man, and the audience gets to see each possible timeline unfold. In the titular darkest timeline, Troy goes to get the pizza, which sees Pierce shot in the thigh and Britta accidentally starting a fire. Dark indeed. Throughout the years, community continued to show us events occurring in the darkest timeline, each more unhinged than the rest. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.